Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today, we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 42. Once, on Christmas Day, 1928, I felt the omnipotence and the presence of God surrounding me, and once more I fled from the interior meeting with the Lord. I asked Mother Superior for permission to go to Josephinic to visit the sisters there. The Superior gave us permission, and we started to get ready right after lunch. The other sisters were already waiting for me at the door of the convent while I ran to my cell to get my cloak. On my way back, as I was passing close to the little chapel, I saw Jesus standing in the doorway. He said to me, Go ahead, but I am taking your heart. Suddenly, I felt that I had no heart in my chest, but the sisters were scolding me for lingering behind, saying that it was already getting late, so I quickly went along with them. But a sense of uneasiness troubled me, and a strange longing invaded my soul, though no one knew what was happening except God. After we had been at Josephinec for only a few minutes, I said to the sisters, let's go back home. The sisters asked for at least a moment's rest, but my spirit could find no peace. I explained that we must return before dark, and inasmuch as we had quite a distance to go, we immediately returned home. When Mother Superior met us in the hallway, she asked me, haven't the sisters gone yet? or have they already returned? I said that we had already returned, because I did not want to be returning in the evening. I took off my cloak and immediately went to the little chapel. As soon as I entered, Jesus said to me, Go to Mother Superior and tell her that you came back not in order to reach home before dark, but because I had taken your heart. Even though this was very difficult for me, I went to the Superior and I told her frankly the real reason why I had come back so soon, and I asked pardon of the Lord for everything that had displeased him. And then Jesus filled me with great joy. I understood that apart from God, there is no contentment anywhere. On one occasion, I saw two sisters who were about to enter hell. A terrible agony tore my soul. I prayed to God for them, and Jesus said to me, Go to Mother Superior and tell her that these two sisters are in danger of committing a mortal sin. The next day I told this to the superior. One of them had already repented with great fervor, and the other was going through a great struggle. One day Jesus said to me, I am going to leave this house, because there are things here which displease me. And the host came out of the tabernacle and came to rest in my hands, and I, with joy, placed it back in the tabernacle. This was repeated a second time, and I did the same thing. Despite this, it happened a third time, but the host was transformed into the living Lord Jesus, who said to me, I will stay here no longer. At this, a powerful love for Jesus rose in my soul. I answered, and I, I will not let you leave this house, Jesus. And again, Jesus disappeared while the host remained in my hands. Once again I put it back into the chalice and closed it up in the tabernacle, and Jesus stayed with us. I undertook undertook to make three days of adoration by way of reparation. Once Jesus said to me, Tell Mother General, Michael, that in this house such and such a thing is being committed, which displeases me and offends me greatly. I did not tell this to Mother right away, but the uneasiness which the Lord made me feel did not permit me to wait a minute longer, and I wrote immediately to Mother General, and peace returned to my soul. I often felt the passion of the Lord Jesus in my body, although this was imperceptible to others, and I rejoiced in it because Jesus wanted it so. But this lasted for only a short time. These sufferings set my soul afire with love for God and for immortal souls. Love endures everything. Love is stronger than death. Love fears nothing. 
In this passage, St. Faustina recounts something that happened to her one year on Christmas Day. Uh, She said that she didn't want to be fooled because many had told her that God wouldn't give such great graces to one like her. And so she didn't want to fall into sin, thinking that these apparitions of the Lord were coming from the evil one. So she resisted God's grace and withdrew from God. And so Jesus took her heart. It reminds me of the song, I Left My Heart, in San Francisco, or the famous passage from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 21, for where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. And it's so true. We see that that St. Faustina had to return from her trip very quickly because her heart was to be with Jesus. And then Jesus purifies her heart by insisting that she be completely open and honest with her superiors. In this way, Jesus is also forming the superiors of St. Faustina, so they will understand what he is doing with her in a special way. So the lesson for us is to be open to God's grace like St. Faustina learned to be. And Jesus wants the conversion of all. He's especially distressed when religious who have consecrated their lives to him are not faithful. So let's pray for the conversion of all, especially of priests and religious who are subject to many temptations to not be faithful to their vocations.